In the past year, one of the biggest trends in the big data world has been the adoption of SQL. There's a lot to like about that. After all, SQL is undoubtedly the most popular and widely known programming and data tool in the world. But is it the right tool for big data systems? Let's have a look. Before you can decide if SQL is the right tool for the job, you need to know what the job is. And that starts with understanding what big data is. I've got a great little presentation that explains big data in more detail, but I'm going to provide a capsule summary here. And I'll start with what big data isn't. You've probably heard of the four V's, the industry standard definition of big data, that it's all some combination of large volume, complex, unstructured varieties of data, handling data in motion, think real-time streams, and working with flawed data sources. It's not. The four V's have always been with us and will always be with us. We've always had too much data for our machines. Most big data isn't unstructured. And where it is, it requires fundamentally different tools than the rest of our data. Velocity is hard, but analytically uninteresting. And data quality, well, it's always sucked. So if that's all there is to big data, it's just not that interesting. No, what makes big data real and interesting is that when you drive data down to a level of detail where each individual record no longer has meaning, you change quite fundamentally the way you understand that data. Instead of each record having intrinsic meaning, the meaning of the data resides in the sequence, time, and pattern of events. And if that's where the meaning resides, that's where the analysis has to reside too. This changes everything from the technology you need to the software you use, to the analysts you want. Why does adding sequence, time, and pattern to the analysis change so much? Well, when order, time, and pattern are important, the fundamental building blocks of traditional IT break down. SQL, of special concern to us here, doesn't work so well for these types of analysis. It's not that traditional relational databases and SQL can't be used when you have to analyze sequences time between events, or patterns. You can use SQL for almost anything, but it's cumbersome. It'll drive you crazy trying to get it right. Oh, and it'll perform like a 20-year-old dog with a heart problem on one leg on a really hot day. You get my meaning? Both ease of query and query performance are awful in SQL when you're trying to work with sequence, time, and patterns. Surprisingly, a lot of traditional statistical analysis doesn't work either. You can't analyze most big data problems with the most common statistical analysis methods. Things like regression, correlation, factor analysis, decision trees, none of it works well when the unit of meaning resides in a pattern of events. Sure, most stats tools these days have a very broad range of methods available, and some of them are appropriate. But chances are, your analysts have never used those methods, don't understand them, and can't apply them to the data effectively. And to cap off our trifecta of failure, joins on big data streams don't work quite the way they do with traditional data. It's not that you can't join the data. You can. It just doesn't help very much. I've reserved that topic for another presentation because it deserves its own careful walkthrough. But SQL, stats tools, and joins are the three pillars of traditional IT. If they're all broken on big data, it's no wonder big data is a challenge. But wait a minute. There's a paradox here. SQL isn't right for big data analytics. So why is everyone rushing to use it? Listen, sometimes industry trends are just a bunch of hot air. But not this time. Computer World and Teradata and a lot of other folks have it right. The overwhelming majority of the enterprises I talk to and the clients I work with are embracing Hive or Impala or something similar that delivers SQL on Hadoop. For most of these companies, it's the primary data access tool they plan to deploy. So what's up with that? I have two theories. First, you have to understand that Hadoop isn't all about analytics. Lots of our clients have embraced Hadoop as a place to park their data, where it's cheaper to store and faster to access than in traditional platforms. If you're looking to Hadoop to save you money in IT costs by replacing expensive hardware with commodity hardware and giving you better performance, 
SQL can be a great technology to deploy as part of that vision. Well, at least if your vendor can get you the performance. That can be an issue, but conceptually, I have no issue with using SQL on Hadoop for common data access tasks, some forms of traditional ELT, and building cubes for reporting engines like Tableau Server. It's a good approach, and it'll help you maximize your Hadoop investment by leveraging the vast amount of SQL knowledge in most organizations. Theory number two is that it's just another enterprise snafu. And I spelled it capitalized to emphasize the acronym. The simple fact is this. Most enterprises don't understand big data analytics in the first place. They're drinking the four V's Kool-Aid. They know SQL does a huge amount of heavy lifting in their traditional analysis and data exploration. So why shouldn't it do the same on Hadoop if a vendor can make it perform? Vendors don't understand the analytics any better than the enterprises that are buying it. They just know people want SQL. Here's the thing. When you focus on Hive or Impala on your big data platform, you've effectively ended any chance of doing real big data analytics. You'll be doing the wrong kinds of work on the data, summing and grouping it instead of patterning it. And everyone will wonder why this big data analytics stuff looks so much like the things we've been doing for the past 20 years. So what's right? Hey, let's start with the fact that there's nothing wrong with SQL on Hadoop. As long as you realize that Hadoop is about more than big data analytics. These big, fast, incredibly cheap commodity systems based around open source have a lot to recommend them, and it isn't all about advanced analytics. When it is about analytics, though, you will sometimes need programmers. I'm an old programmer, so I love this trend. Certain kinds of big data analysis and even basic counting work a lot better in algorithmic approaches when you have to deal with patterns. Things that would take a wall of SQL and a long time to run, yes, even on Hadoop, can often be done in 10 or 15 lines of C or Java code and will run far, far faster. If you don't have some programmers on your big data analytics team, you don't understand big data analytics. Having said that, I'm not a fan of every analyst being a full-stack data scientist. There are lots of good, really good analysts who don't happen to be good programmers. That's why I am a fan of dedicated ELT systems and analytics systems that include significant and complex ELT capabilities. They won't do everything, but they will keep your programmers from getting swamped. By the way, it's also important to think about Spark here. Spark usage has grown dramatically, and you'll find it at most of the places where people actually understand that big data analytics isn't quite the same old-fashioned brand of analytics people are used to. It delivers much better performance than MapReduce for a number of key analytics tasks. I almost hate to go here because deep learning is even more misunderstood than big data and has an even cloudier curtain of hype surrounding it. But deep learning methods are applicable to a fairly wide range of big data analytics problems. It's worth deploying tools like TensorFlow against your problem set, or at least considering if your problem set is right for deep learning. And finally, you'll want to deploy, build, or buy a fundamentally different set of analytics tools than you're probably used to. Many of these are available in stats packages. They just aren't the things everybody uses. But methods like survival analysis and Markov chains can be very applicable to big data analytics problems. They deal with data in time and sequence in ways that are powerful and potentially interesting. So let's put a cherry on top of this presentation. Bottom line, SQL has a place in the Hadoop world, but it isn't the tool of choice for big data analytics. And once you understand what big data analytics actually is, the reasons are pretty obvious. If you have thoughts, questions, or comments, feel free to drop me a line. And if you need consulting help creating a real big data strategy, building big data systems, or doing big data analytics, definitely feel free to drop me a line. Thanks for listening.